Hey guys, welcome back to the second part of this video. This is going to be American React to the NHS healthcare system. So I'm going to see what this guy think about it and I'm going to give you my opinion about it. It's not exactly correct because I haven't really experienced the NHS system even though I live in the UK. So this is the second part. Let's continue. One really believed that UK voters would decide to Brexit. The news I know, that, that the was United stupid. voted to leave the European Union shock the world. The NHS was a big part of the Brexit media discourse with the Leave campaign famously claiming that the UK would take back 350 million pounds NHS a week that could then be funneled into the huh. NHS. The UK Ugh. Statistics Authority has since said that the claim is a quote clear misuse of official statistics. My name is Holly Jarman. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Health Management and Policy at the University of Michigan. Those promises really did hit home for a lot of people. The idea that money would come back um, from Europe to the UK was a very powerful symbol. It's not actually true. Where is it? Uh, that wasn't really how uh, EU financing works. But Pretty we much. still saw that that was a big part of the media discourse and most likely part of people's judgment when they were casting their vote. The UK officially left the EU three years after the original Brexit vote, entering a transitory period through the end of 2020 while the UK government negotiates international trade deals. That's something I really haven't looked into either is the, you know, Brexit. Uh, you know, I understand the basics of what it is, but I don't really understand how it affected the UK. It affected a lot. I Why really understand. Lot? I know. I know it was like on really thin margins, like 50-50 almost, or maybe it's 51-49% wanted to leave versus not leave. But, um, you know, I just... I wonder how that's affected people in the UK oh, since that's quite happened. a lot. What's that been? That's, Terrible. That like, what is that? Everything eight, is expensive. Seven, eight years now or something. It's been a while. Everything is expensive. The concerns about private American corporations engaging more with the NHS came up during the discussion of the post Brexit trade talks with the United States. When you're dealing in trade, everything is on the table. So NHS or anything else, or a lot, a lot more than that. Backlash to President Trump's comments on the NHS led to many British politicians assuring their constituents that the NHS was not going to be a part of the trade talks. The NHS is in no way on the table. President Trump then backtracked on his comments, saying he wouldn't consider the NHS as part of the trade deal. A lot of trade That's negotiations all. are actually you do quite think you secretive are. by nature. The two sides don't really want to reveal a lot about what they're looking for in a deal. Our concern really as health researchers is that the NHS really won't be accounted for in that deal. That the UK government's preferences have been shown to be largely economic um, and not so much on the focusing on the health of people in Britain. They're not the trying to fix this. The system. NHS is, is already on the table. It has been for a while. But the politicians who, who are now going to be negotiating the trade deals, you know, it's going to be across many fronts. Campaigners were saying, OK, Put your money where your mouth is. If if you're saying the NHS won't be in a trade deal, then let's see legislation that sets that out so it's cast in uh, in stone. And uh, uh, they haven't rushed to do that. Trade negotiations cover everything at once, and it's difficult to tell um, how they are going to be pushing for the liberalisation. There wasn't prepared. Uh -oh. And to what extent the Johnson cabinet would actually agree with any changes that would be proposed to the way the UK regulates pharmaceuticals. It's really a central... I think... I don't want to talk much about it because there's a lot going... A lot... There's, there's quite a lot when it comes to the Brexit deal because I think that they wasn't prepared because they didn't think we were actually going to leave, if that makes sense. Therefore, people would not vote to leave. That's what they're seriously for. They didn't know there would be like majority more on leaving than actually leaving. That's why all of this back backlash of the deal, we are still feeling it, which is annoying. <sighs> and they're not even trying to fix it. That's the annoying part. It's like, you fix the mistake you made. I don't say go back, but at least fix it. 
through a government-led process that's not that democratic and does represent big business. And I think that's why a lot of people get very concerned and anxious around trade agreements. There are some who say the NHS won't be harmed by Brexit, even in the event a trade deal with the EU isn't reached by the end of the year. I don't expect that we're going to see uh, huge changes, actually, in the Brexit era. With well, I'm guessing a few of the things they're talking about now have come to pass. I think this video was two or three years ago. Uh, but this was the uh, most recent video that looked like, based off of who it was and the thumbnail and stuff, that uh, looked like it would be um, a good way to learn about it. I haven't really seen many videos that look like they go into depth, uh, especially recently, or that were made recently. With regard to the, uh, to the National Health Service. And so I think with, with regard to the NHS, uh, we're not likely to see a significant impact as a result of, of Brexit. I think the, uh, the, the free trade deal will be largely focused upon uh, the service industry, which of course is now the largest part of both of the US and British economies. Whatever yeah. effect the trade deals end up having on the UK, reforming the NHS will continue to be a big part of the country's political conversation. People's support for the NHS in the UK is very strong. There's no other country that, when we hosted the Olympics in London, we had nurses jumping on beds, and the NHS was actually a part of that ceremony and a part of that national celebration. <laughs> the UK's NHS is very important in British politics. It's um, an important symbol of um, Britishness in that context. It's powerful. You can't separate it. That's yeah, why you say you will not go private. That was really interesting. I I learned quite a bit. I a number of my questions got answered in that. I still think I need to look deeper into this and and really, I kind of want to understand more. Like, if you literally go to the doctor for different reasons or the hospital for different reasons. You know, what are you potentially going to pay out of pocket? Because like I said, some things you are paying out of pocket. For example, you go to the dentist, you get certain vision care, some other things. So I'm kind of really curious about across the board, what's it going to cost you if you go for different services? Obviously, I believe it's going to be very, very much cheaper uh, than um, the U.S. for any other service, probably. So, um, but... Okay, so that one is a little bit hard because I don't think operation or this kind of stuff you pay out of pocket. You do not. The one that I know you pay is this um, eyes, dental, and uh, prescription. That's the one you pay. The rest, you do not pay for it because the tax pay for all of that. That's why I say it's kind of like having a candy that you want to eat but you have to wait until you eat it but someone else is eating that candy before you that kind of thing and plus it's it's complicating because they, listen if the uk the government decide to go private on the healthcare, they're going to have a massive riot that will not happen it's just that we have a problem with how the system is working. The people that are running the system are not doing it correctly. We just want that to be fixed. Fix that instead of trying to go private. Train your doctors, your nurses. Don't take other country doctors and nurses and um, contract to do the job. Train the one that you have here. If you want to have one, employ them so that they'll be in this country and stuff of and make sure that the one people that you know everyone is going to talk to, you train them to know what they're talking about. Oh my gosh. It's like why are you guys not studying medicine if you're not going to do that? That's why I hate science. Because the people actually doing the diagnosis don't know what to diagnose. I mean, doesn't know how to diagnose people. Oh my God, this is crazy. I'm really curious on, I do believe that the average person in the UK, the, the vast majority support the NHS. Yeah, and every one of them. As someone who is in the US, doesn't understand the system really, never lived, you know, never lived, lived in a system like that. For the people that don't support it, what are the reasons? What what have you experienced, you know, that made you not what I said. supportive of the system? Um, 
you know, as an outsider looking in, you know, just based off some... First of all, the wait time, the money you're spending because you can literally see it. Well, which is a good thing because you know what she's going out. Um, yeah. And the fact that you don't actually go to the hospital <laughs> that much. Yeah. You know, the little bit that I understand, um, I already feel like I'm probably, just for my, my monthly insurance, I'm probably paying my monthly insurance premium i'm probably paying what the average person in the uk is paying automatically through the taxation right um you know i hmm. our insurance we got a bottom of the barrel plan understand that we're not talking about something that's going to be that's very, really true. very great insurance or anything like that we're talking about a bottom of the barrel plan because i didn't want to pay crazy amounts of money for it but that is about for for my wife and I, it's uh, close to $700 a month. $700? And... $700 a month. No, we pay less than that. Well, depending on who and how much they're making. But if you... If I had to think about it in my perspective, I pay less than that. I think I pay... Wait, 300 free No. 30 pound, 30 pound, 60, 30 pound, roughly 200 a month, 200 pound a month, or less than 200 pound a month. That's how much I spend on, if I had to say, in Just that sense. Understand, $700 a month, what's that get you? It gets you an $18,000 deductible. Uh, actually, it was a $18,200 deductible, meaning that... You know, for most services, you know, hospital things, anything, you know, most things, you're going to have to shell out $18,200 for the, for the two of you. It's $9,100 a, a, a piece deductible before you're covered with stuff. So based off of that, it sounds like it's a much more beneficial system in the UK if you're it generally is. paying, you know, less than that, say $700 a month. It is because technically we don't feel it because it's like you can see it since you start working you're paying this like for health insurance if that kind of how you want to see it but you're paying a health insurance since you're 16 so it's literally accumulating all that kind of money for when you have the surgery or this kind of stuff which will cover it because you pay a lot if you consider but the fact is some people may not like it because of the fact they don't actually go to the hospital and they pay for quite a lot but there's also the twist that because it's not only covered for the nhs it covers for other things such as the bus well that's separate but the road that you're living in or the bill I mean, the bean collection, all this kind of stuff, like the immunity that can be living in the country, taking care of the country, all that kind of stuff, and maintaining certain things, all this kind of stuff, you're paying for some of them. You don't even realize, but your tax money pay for quite a lot of things, not just for the NHS. So we don't really know how much go to the NHS. And how much go to different variety, and how much all that kind of stuff. It's more like we are all one instead of an individual and because i think because we consume so many american type of shows it kind of like play into how we see our own system we may say oh your system is not good it's not the best and great like that but back in our mind we were like why are we paying for things that we are not using and stuff like that it kind of affect is affecting us in a way like your style affecting us because you're like yes i don't have to pay for this i don't have to pay this why do i need to do this with this kind of stuff and then we were like why do we have to pay for this when we are paying for it so it's kind of like i think the american like system or style of living is coming to the to the uk which is scary because the mentality that i'm seeing is really really similar 
and that's dangerous in my opinion. We could be too uh, much American. Into your taxes for the NHS in the UK, because then the rest of us, for most part, after that is covered for you. For us, that's not quite the case. Uh, we got deductibles, we got co-pays, we have co-payments, you know, co-insurance, and okay. other, you know, different things we'd have to pay out. Um, but luckily, not everything goes under deductible. Some things, for example, if you need to go to the doctor and you're going to, I don't know, you, you need to be seen for something minor, you can go to your local doctor and pay a copay, and you don't have to meet your deductible for that. But anything big, um, you know, you've got to pay for it. You need an ambulance, you've got to pay for it. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of curious, like I said, on how more of the how more of the pay, uh, the co-pays out of pocket for people in the UK work for certain items. And I'm also really curious, what is that percentage that people are paying out? So if the, so if someone in the UK, or let's say a couple in the UK is making $75,000 a year, what are, how much, or let's say 75,000 pounds per year, how many pounds are they paying out per year into the NHS system? Uh, you know, to be covered. That would give me a better idea of like what it's really costing someone. Um, That's what I say. But another the question tax, I have, the guys, is so me as an American, if I was to come to the UK for a visit, I'm planning on it at some point when I have the ability to do so. I've got to save up the money to do so because it's going to be a really expensive trip, obviously. Okay. Uh, because I want to come for like a month or so um, with, with my wife and my daughter. Um, but do I need to have health insurance or does the NHS in some way cover me while I'm there? Oh, um, you know, it doesn't cover you. No, it does not cover you. If you're coming to the UK and then you don't have insurance, you can't go to and you have a situation where you need to go to the hospital you can go to the hospital but you have to pay it's not going to be crazy amount like you pay in america it will be less than that it will be not crazy it will be less than the amount you pay in the uk but you will have to pay for it so you best to have a insurance which will pay less than that but it will not be crazy amount of money it's just going to be cheap totally cheap when it's say cheap it's cheap no, I understand that when people come from other countries, for example, the UK, to visit America, a lot of people will get supplemental health insurance because they understand how crazy the system is here. If you broke an arm while you were here, that could be pretty expensive, you know. Um, so I'm just really curious, how does that work for an America coming to the to the UK? Do I also need to get a supplemental health insurance plan just to be covered there, or is there some you sort do, of NHS? protocol oh. that covers visitors as well um, yeah you pay less this was really interesting a good first overall introduction to the nhs system all right this is the end of this video i think now he's going to do his conclusion but what he did say is like technically well about if you had to pay if you were to come to the uk is the answer is yes you pay for it because the nhs covered british citizens so if you are not a british citizen it's not going to cover you and th that's the reason why when we travel we sorry i don't know where he cut so he, i think this was the conclusion and I was saying how he was saying that if you were to come to the UK and stuff like that. And I was like, well, for us, if we go there, we had to pay for travel insurance, obviously. But there is one which is a national health insurance, which I think covered by the NHS or the government. So we don't really have to pay for it. So it's kind of free. But it depends on what country you apply for. That's the scary part. That's why we do get the travel insurance, even though we have that. Um, because we are not sure if that one will cover all of it. And that one will cover stuff like that. So that's why we have that. But if it was the reverse, when you guys had to come here, unfortunately, the NHS cover only for the British citizen. So if you come in the country, you have to pay for it but it's not going to be crazy expensive it will be very cheap and reasonable 
that's how the healthcare in the British, I um, mean, in the UK is is reasonable. They're not trying to overcharge because that's not the point. The point is to make you healthy, and they don't want liability. <laughs> They don't want you to have a problem with the country or something that you're healthy. If you have other issue, you're healthy. Until you go to your country and you're sick over there, that's your problem over there. But in this country, they'll make sure you're healthy and that's it. So they always take care when it comes to health and stuff like that because they do not. <laughs> ah, that's my opinion. So you definitely have to pay because you're not paying tax in this country. So why would we cover you? <laughs> Oh my god, this is the end of this video before I ramble on my stuff. This is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I found it a little bit interesting to do this type of video. Maybe I'll do two other type of video that I've seen because it's actually good. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.